Like I said at the beginning of the season, I think Jonathan Gannon is here only one more year. He's either going to do a great job and get a head coaching job, or he's going to stick it up and get fired. Either way, it looks like Vic Fangio may be the defensive coordinator in waiting. here and you know whoever said being a cowboy fan isn't a cult they're everywhere they are everywhere everywhere i'm driving around today i hear cowboy fans hey we're coming for you guys next week my response we're five and oh hey the eagles haven't had any quality wins my response the eagles are five and oh Jalen hurts didn't throw any touchdown passes yesterday my response the eagles are five and oh no matter how you look at it no matter how they want to twist it, the Philadelphia Eagles are undisputed, undefeated, 5-0, best record in the National Football League. And guess what? Vic Fangio may be defensive coordinator waiting. Now we're going to get into it in a second, but before we do that, if you're new to the channel and you like the content, make sure you hit that like button, make sure you subscribe. We do Eagles stuff every day and... We will be streaming, of course, the Eagles-Cowboys game. This is going to be a crazy, crazy game. Crazy week, is it not? And if you've been subscribed for a while, you know the deal. Just double check. Double moonwalk check. Make sure you're still subscribed. Now, before we get into the Eagles and, and what I have to say, I've been thinking a lot about probably the fact that I'm probably going to have multiple bets with multiple different uh, Cowboy content creators this week. Uh, we're going to be putting it all on the line. Now, I was thinking about Mark Holmes specifically, and I was thinking about him and his son. First thing I have to say, Michael Anthony, where's the fitness? I want my belt back. I want my belt back. I want you to put the belt on the line. I don't know what you want me to do in return, but I want that belt on the line. So let's come up with something. Do you accept putting that belt on the line with Philly 500? Do you accept that bet? Because I ain't playing. It's my belt. I need it back. Forget Pizzle. I need that belt. It's mine. I'm a three-time defending champion of that belt. I want it back. Okay? So I'm throwing that right out there to you today. I want the bet. I'm challenging Michael Anthony. Where's the fitness for that belt? Now, Mark Holmes, I've been thinking a lot about this because you, you, you don't really want to do anything that puts you out there too much. You're a little scared to do a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Oh, I'm too old for this. I don't want, my hair won't grow back. All scared talk, right? That's all it is, Cowboys scared talk. Uh, but I want to bet, and if the Eagles sweep Dallas this year, I want Joe Boo's head. I want you to have to get a get a big axe and chop Joe Boo's head off. That's what I want if we sweep you. Do you accept that? You can fire back with whatever you want me to do. You want me to chop my hand off, couple fingers? Let's do it. You know, let's do it. But in the meantime, for this bet this week, I've been thinking about a lot of different scenarios. And, and I'm thinking, he ain't going to go for any of The old man ain't going for it. He's too old. He ain't going for it. His arthritis is bothering him. He's got his liver pills, his blood pressure medication. Uh, he almost he almost trapped himself, had a heart attack with Pizzle last week. So I'm just gonna make this easy. I got a bet for you. I got a bet, and this is a two, this is kind of a two-pronged bet for you. Okay? So let's say Dallas beats the Eagles this week, Mark Holmes. If the Cowboys go to Philly and beat the Eagles, I will buy a CD Lamb jersey. I will buy a CD Lamb jersey, about what, 150 bucks, 160 bucks, and I will wear it on at least one video for one week. At least one video a day, every day, I will wear it. At least one video for a whole week. CD Lamb. What do you say? You like that? Now, if I win, there are two things I want you to do. And I was thinking about this, you know, and one thing I like to do is help out my friends, help out my brothers, help out Eagle fans, you know? So what I want you to do, I figured we, we should throw, 
We should throw a few bucks at my man LB. We should throw a few bucks at him. And so if the Eagles beat the Cowboys, Mark Holmes, and you accept, you have to buy a hurt season hat. Full price. You got to pay full price for it. Buy a hurt season hat. And you have to wear it for one video every day. Now, you do 90 videos a day. So one of those videos a day has to be a hurt season hat. And in that video, you can't talk bad about the Eagles. Also, because a jersey costs more than a hat, every day I want you to get a little piece of cake, a little cupcake, or whatever, and you have to sing happy birthday to Jerry Jones. So, like, um, Monday after the game, Jerry Jones is going to be 923 years old. So I want you to get candles, I want you to get cake, and I want you to sing happy birthday on 923 years old. The next day, when he's 924 years old, I want you to sing happy birthday. And every day for a week, that's the bet. That is the bet. Do you accept? Do you accept? That is an easy bet. And really, I'm paying more. I was thinking about you not being able to stream me, things like that, where I get your super chats. We can negotiate anything like that you want. You know, I, I was thinking if I my face is on Mark Holmes' stream, I get all the super chats that he gets while my face is on there. But I know he wouldn't go for it. You know, Mark Holmes, you don't touch Mark Holmes' money. He, he'll take his own son out. You don't mess with his money. All right? But I'll put that bet out there too if you want it. But I think that's a fair bet. Buy, 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 buy my man, Hurt Season, buy LB's Hurt Season hat, wear it one video every day. Can't talk bad about the Eagles in that video. And you got to sing happy birthday every day to Jerry Jones. That way we can send it to him and we can wish him happy birthday. He's old as shit. All right. So do you accept it? Mike Lanthony, where's the fitness? Do you accept it? I'm sure there are many other bets coming. Now, I've talked about this too long, these bets. But I had to get it out there. I want to get it there early this week. Now, what was interesting yesterday in this game was the Eagles did not play their best football. It was quite obvious, everybody knows it, they did not play their best football. Yet, they found a way to win. When it was, what, 17-17, Jalen Hurts in the fourth quarter, got them down there, went on a drive, killed a ton of clock, and they kicked the game-winning field goal. Uh, some things went right, of course. We were stirring that gravy. He missed the field goal, and he couldn't tie it up. And, and yeah, we caught a few breaks, but we won. Good teams find a way to win, and the Eagles are 5-0. Okay, um, now, my biggest, my biggest, like, worry about the Eagles going into this offseason has and will always be Jonathan Gannon. I worry about him. I, I don't necessarily like his scheme. I think he, he's not aggressive too much. I think at times he just sits there and he lets these quarterbacks he has respect for do too much to him. Um, but it is interesting, and it's coming out today that um, – uh, Vic Fangio, a guy who's been coming to camp all all spring, all training camp long, is actually consulting the Eagles. He is actually consulting the de the Eagles and most likely the defense. He may even be sitting there in on game planning and things like that. Uh, here's what Michael Kiss said: uh, Per source, Vic Fangio is consulting the Eagles, um, and it's not it's not a surprise. It's not a surprise at all, okay? Uh, and, and here's what Bleeding Green uh, Nation said about it. The Philadelphia Eagles have a better defense now than they did last year at this time. Through the first five games of 2021, the Birds allowed 23.2 offensive points per game. Through the first five games of 2022, the Birds have allowed just 16 offensive points per game. There are multiple reasons for the improvement. Key factors include improved roster, a more experienced staff, schematic continuity, and opponent quality differences. Um, Jonathan Gannon ultimately deserves credit overseeing better results. And it might not hurt that the Eagles defensive coordinator has had assistance from someone named the, quote, dubbed the most influential defensive coordinator in the modern, modern NFL. The Eagles are currently consulting with former Denver Broncos head coach and longtime NFL defensive coordinator Vic Fangio. A source tells Bleeding Green Nation, uh, 
of Bleeding Green Radio and current SB Nation executive producer of the team's community podcast, Michael Kist, and we just talked about it. So this is not surprising to me at all that Vic Fangio is consulting. I mean, we know he's been around, so you figure he's doing something. And to me, like I said, uh, I think Jonathan Gannon, he almost got a head coaching job last year with Houston, okay? So to me, Jonathan Gannon, uh, if he's really good as a defensive coordinator and the Eagles' defense is good, he's going to get a head coaching job most likely. And then if he's really bad, he's going to get fired. Now you have a 5-0 and Eagles defense a 5-0 Eagles team whose defense has been pretty good. Yes, I am losing my voice. Um, I, I lost it from screaming so much last night and then smoking. I smoked three cigars last night. I'm not going to lie. I was celebrating pretty hard, you know. So um, I'm losing my voice, so I apologize. I got to get a drink. But sorry about that. I had, to get, I had to get a drink. So Vic Fangio has been consulting the Eagles, and there's a good chance either way Jonathan Gannon is, is not here next year. Really? We could lose Steichen and Jonathan Gannon. You know what happens when a team wins and they go deep in the playoffs, have a great record, look the way the Eagles have the first five weeks of the season. A lot of times, those offensive coordinators, they get plucked first. There's a chance. Who knows? Maybe you get a guy like uh, Frank Wright gets fired, and then, you know, the Eagles need an offensive coordinator. He comes back as the offensive coordinator. Who knows? Crazy, crazy things have happened. But I think Vic Fangio... He's a local guy. I think he's in line to be the defensive coordinator. Uh, and, and listen, he could end up somewhere else next year. Who knows? But my gut feeling tells me that Vic Fangio is, is consulting right now. And then if Gannon does leave, they're going to slide Vic Fangio right in there as defensive coordinator, which I would love. I think he's, I think he's more aggressive than Jonathan Gannon. So I, I would not be opposed to that. At all, I thought. You know, I thought yesterday, like uh, I, I thought early on, the defense was playing good, and then I, I just felt like I feel like Jonathan Gannon was just like too worried about Kyler Murray, his legs, and his ability to escape, and he didn't he didn't blitz enough, or he didn't bring enough pressure at uh, Kyler Murray. And I thought he should have tested him a little more. Now maybe maybe he would have gotten beat long or something like that. We've given up, we would have given up a big play. But what's the difference if you're giving up a big play where they're taking ten minutes and going seventeen plays and and scoring on you anyways? I think some point when a guy is in a rhythm, especially a quarterback, you got to do something about it. And you know he he really he really didn't. So that was a little bit. Yeah, that was a little bit upsetting. And then I thought it was interesting, Nick Sirianni today was talking about the offense and why so many screen plays, right? Especially to uh, the receivers, tight end early in the game. And he said they, they were doing it to offset Arizona's blitz. And, and that's great and all, and I thought it worked early. But when Arizona adjusted, they kept doing it. There were times they were running wide receiver screens. There was nobody to block. So I thought, I thought they went to the well one you know one too many times i think there's different ways to approach or to attack a team that's blitzing you and it would have been nice if they changed it up i think sometimes the eagles get too caught or stuck in their ways and and it worries me it also is starting i said you know week one when they didn't score anything really in the second uh second half of the game and then in the minnesota game people say are you worried i said i'm not really worried yet when we get four or five games in if it continues then I may be a little more worried about it. I'm starting to worry about it a little bit now. I, I feel like they come out, they have a great game plan, but they're not making the proper adjustments at halftime to be able to go down and score points in the second half. they got to do much better with that um, this week. And I think they will. I think these are all fixable problems. I think they'll clean up what they had. Truth be told, I, I'll be honest, I, I, I thought that this game was the game you know, it, it, it was your game that you had to really watch for. This was your trap game. Uh, it was a trap game for all the reasons we talked about. And if, you know, if, if the Eagles were going to win this game, it was going to be a hard-fought win, and they were going to scrap it out. It's exactly what happened. This was a trap game, but the Eagles pulled it out anyways. They're going to go play Dallas next Sunday. It, it, this ain't going to be a problem. And even, you know, even Jalen Hurts, kind of was alluding it to it. You know, he was not happy 
about, about the way he played. He thought he let the team down. And he said something interesting to the, uh, to the press. He says, well, I know next week I'm not going to have to worry about you guys asking me questions about, you know, who we're playing. You know, but I think that that message was more than just towards the press. I think it was also towards the players. I think that this was the trap game, the letdown game. I think Hertz saw it during the week that, that you know, maybe the practice they were having, the way people were in the locker room feeling themselves too much. I feel like he sensed it, and he kind of, when he, when he made the comments uh, to the press, before the game about you didn't ask me anything about Arizona. I think that was on purpose. I think that was more uh, trying to talk to his locker room. And I think what he's saying is this team's going to be ready this week because it's Dallas. So I expect the Eagles to be much, much better this week. Uh, but at the end of the day, I'm not going to be sitting there complaining or crying or saying we're horrible at this, we're horrible at that because we are 5-0. and Do we have clean uh, things to clean up? Absolutely. Was it an ugly game at times? Yes, it was. But in my opinion, I think that the Eagles, they, they pulled out a game that was a trap game, that was a tough game because of the spot it was in, and they got through it. So now you move on to Dallas Sunday night. This is going to be one of the most hyped October games I can remember. A 5-0 and team versus a 4-1 and team, both in the same division. They don't like each other. I mean, it doesn't get better than this. Uh, and we all, whether you're an Eagles fan, Cowboys fan, even Giant fans, you got to enjoy this because this is going to be a fun week. Uh, that's pretty much my thoughts on the Arizona game. Uh, as of right now, uh, it's all Dallas. From this point on, it's all about the Eagles-Cowboys game. So we'll see what happens. We will talk, talk a lot about it. And I'm sure I'm going to be on a bunch of different shows this week. So look out for that too. With that said, take care. Talk to you later, of course. Don't be a dingbat. Remember, it's how we vision. We're all just living in it. So one other thing I forgot to talk about. Jordan Davis. Jordan Davis played 42% of the snaps yesterday, and I thought he was pretty good, especially against the run. He continues to help that run defense, but he made a couple nice plays against the running backs in the backfield. I thought he was good. And tell you what, going up against the Dallas Cowboys this week, uh, they're going to try to run a lot. I have a feeling this week is going to be Jordan Davis's breakout game. This is where he's going to make his mark, and I can't wait for it. So I'm going to sit back now, wait and see if Mark Holmes accepts the bet, Michael Anthony, where's fitness, accepts the bet, and uh, we'll go from there. Denzel Washington out.